Okay, welcome aboard, ladies and gents. Now, we don't have any time to waste. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to unpick a few of these little areas here where they've got spot welds, unpick them, and I'm going to replace this outer section along here. Welcome aboard everyone. I'm back on this little filler panel that I made up about three episodes back. I hadn't tacked it into place because I couldn't. I had to come forward with my door and move along and try and get this guard to sit on. So I've got to a point now where I can actually start to weld this on. So I've done a few little tacks on that. I haven't gone over the top of this because of the heat, the way that'll distort really quickly. So I've got to keep that mindful all the time about that heat. So what I'll do is, as I go, I'll just grab my little straight edge here and make sure the thing's not distorting and pulling out of the position that I've got it in. So we'll chuck this straight edge on and see where we're at. See how good that is. Got to keep that nice and straight. And at the moment, that's gone on there very good, very nice and straight there. So I'll just continue with that now very carefully because as I say I don't want to overcook this it's only panel steel gently gently so I'll go I'll work my way along I'll go front to back front to back front to back bit by bit till I get it where I need to be and once it's completely welded on then I'll dress it all up buff it all up outside inside and then I'm good to go to sit a guard on it and then I can keep working along the front of the car and at this stage the way that's sitting on it's gone on good how it should. It's nice and well with that straight edge. They don't lie. It's spot on. It's really straight. So when that guard sits up on that lip, it'll lay in there absolutely correctly. So that's where we're at at the moment and I'll just continue on.
it's not too bad under there. Just snip that off there. And... All right, so I'm starting to weld little by little, welding this um, little filler panel that I've made up along the edge here. Very carefully, just little tacks, little tiny runs, bit by bit, and I'll work from the front to the back. Just take my time, just very carefully. Trick to it all is, and this finer stuff is, don't become impatient because once you do that, the whole job will go south real quick. Sometimes it's a bit smarter to go a bit slower, and in the end you'll go a bit quicker. Constantly check your work, stop, have a look. Don't just get into it and weld. You might have to readjust things as you go. You'll notice I hesitate there between welds a little bit, that's for the heat side of it. I just want to watch the pool, just see where that weld lays in. I don't want to go overboard and cook it. Once you start to get too much heat into it, you start to lose it, it goes away. And you've got to start and try and chase it back. Sorry about the in inconsiderate other person with the grinder, it's so bloody annoying, isn't it? And the other thing too, a little trick, when you're welding, you can do what we call a push-pull type or style of weld. You can either push your weld in, or pull it along. Just depends what you're comfortable with and what you're trying to achieve. Um, you, you, you just get a feel for it as you go. You kind of, as the job goes, you go, okay, that needs to be forced or pulled in a li little bit. Sometimes not so much, so you go in the other direction a bit. Okay, so that's seamed up that along there. I've left a little bit of a, a higher bead along that. I'll buff probably about uh, most of that down, not all of it. I'll leave a, a little bit of extra meat along the back of that seam for strength. I don't want to have it exactly, you know, to the millimetre perfect. I will deliberately keep it a little bit chunkier, but it'll come up nice. But what it's done too, the way I've welded it, it's, it's actually tucked in a little bit. And that's the way these guards do as they come forward. They tuck in and that's, that's just rolled in there nicely. I've got this tiny little bit left down here to do. That'll fill up with a nice little bit of runner weld. And then I've got to chop the corner out. New bit for the corner. But basically, yeah, she's pretty good now. And just one little um, seam there to go. Just across the back there. Just in there, fill that up. 
But um, once that's dressed up and a, a tiny bit of a tap here and there, yeah, she's a good thing now. Those are pops coming hey, up, all right or what? You've got a little bit of meat still on there. Got plenty on there, that's what I wanted. Yeah, that's looking schmicko, mate. Just knock that edge off there a little bit, smooth her out a bit, and she'll be sweet. <laughs> Beautiful and nice pops. Looking the good. Made a little bit of primer over that, and you'll never know it's been touched. So you're not finished, obviously. You're still going to take a little bit off. A little off. bit off there, but that, that gives you a bit of an idea what it's going to look like at a quick look.
Okay, so I've transferred my little pattern.
Okay, Dad was saying in the previous episodes, I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to get that general shape going, dipping just through the middle, just like through there. But doing it by hand, like so, I'm starting to get that. Yeah, right eh? Okay, Pops, how's it looking now? It's come up really nice. So straight edge, there you go. You get a pretty good idea of what that edge is like. Sitting in there very nice at the moment. Yeah, very nice. All right, so there you go. Now, I'll we'll pull that off and you can have a look at the finish. Well, it's not quite finished, we're nearly there, but dressed it up a little bit. I've got this little bit to go up here and these few holes. I'll just finish that end piece up. So those little tiny ones you can see, primer will get those obviously. Big as a head of a pin, they're nothing. There's plenty of meat through that corner there now. And that's yep. 
It's nice and strong. You'd have to flog that with a hammer to bend that. So Mate, go easy, don't rip it off. This little bit here now, I've just got to tidy this up. I've got to make this new little piece. So I'll weld all that in together and finish that up there. And that sit down onto the rad support like so at the very finish. And I'll do, I'll do that when I do that. But you can see along there the profile now, the whole bit, it's gone back into its shape. But it certainly looks better than the old piece that was there. I'll give you an old comparison. This was the before. That's what we had before. Basically, that's what it looked like. And that's not real pretty, that bit. And then you've got the after. Yeah, beautiful, Pops. And you've left a little bit of meat on there, I see. Yep. Sweet. Mate, what can I say? Beautiful, nice, Pops. The, the guard will pop back on there and um, beauty. Beautiful and nice. All right. All right, so as you can see before, I was just uh, doing the old hammer and dolly and um, I was just drawing the grain into the steel like so, so I can get those those nice, it's, it's a bit of a funny shape in the end of the door. So the way when, if you see if I'm hitting it and sometimes I'm going like this and that's actually drawing the shape that I need with the grain of the steel. And it's very important because it's actually shrinking it in one place and stretching it. So it's gonna make, make the bow and get the bow go that way and also that way. And um, yeah, so you can see now I'm just a little bit I'm in the right like 40% in, just generalizing, getting that shape into it and um, make it all beautiful and nice all around here so it fits perfectly, but you'll see that when it's finished. So, but yeah, drawing that grain into the metal is very important for us right now. So I really want to get that proper shape. The shape is just, it, it's the hardest part, but the old school ways, hands on, it's the only way you can really get this, this shape into it perfectly. I'm just going to go over now and um, finish dressing up the end and welding up the end of this um, left hand inner skirt. So clamp that down. I've got to get the right size clamp. That one's just not quite long enough for me. Damn it. I need to just get on the end of that so it'll sit down at the nice height there for me. I just want to seam this little bit up here. Get something to clamp that. I could, you know, could probably hold it, but I want to have that exactly where I need it to be. I'm just get a clamp somehow to get on there for me, just to pull that down a little bit. That's probably a little bit too much. I might work there. Beautiful. Maybe a bit more. Just about there, I think, will work. I'll get a tack onto that. That'll be good. Right Righto. Some gloves and a helmet would be nice. Oh, that rain sounds good. Yep. All right, nice little tack there just to hold it where I need it. Release that clamp. So I can adjust the end of that so it's sitting nice and flush for me. The beauty of a MIG is too, the advantage of that, you've got a bit of a gap like that there. Once you become, you know, fairly experienced with a MIG, you can fill those gaps in really good. And believe it or not, some, sometimes you'll look at that and think, oh, well, that's a bit ugly, that's a bit much. But if you know how to use one of these things really good, it's a good thing. It can work to your advantage because you've got a nice gap that you can lay a weld in there and the penetration's spot on. It's really yeah, good. It spreads. Whereas sometimes you can have virtually nil gap or no gap, it's sometimes not as good as having a bigger gap. Yeah, so that's good for a TIG. Yeah, it is. So different, different configurations, different gear. But anyway, we'll spot this in here. Yeah. That's, that'll fill in there, just a little bridging tack there to start with, and I'll use that now to work off to fill that in. But that's sitting down in position, it's nice and level and flush there. I can now go ahead and weld that in and I'll clean it up. Then I'll come down here onto this little bit on the end of the um, skirt that's not much left of. The old white answer got in here and it's gone. I'll make another bit up, join it all onto there. The old metal maggots, mate. Yeah, and down here where that hasn't been 
finished years ago off, so I'll clean all that up and... Yeah, make it beautiful and nice. Yep, giving it a couple of little spots just to hold in place. And I've pulled, built a little bit up just here right at the very end because a bit thin, gap is fairly wide, so that's bridged over pretty good. There's plenty of meat there, I'll just grind that down a little bit. But now, you've got to be very complacent or don't get complacent when you go to do these welds. It's easy, easy to do, you can be talking away and you forget where you're at, but just a little tack, little tack and you vary. Don't just get on the one spot and think, oh, I'll just fill that in. Just be mindful and go, I'll give it a tack, move along somewhere else, let it cool a bit, come back and keep working backwards and forwards. Because if you don't, before you know it, and it's only not even a mill thick, a lot of this sheet, by the time you give it a couple of welds here, a couple there, that thing's becoming alive, it's becoming hot. So always remember your heat's very, very important, but you've got to have the penetration at the same time. So we'll give this a couple of spots. And that's all I do, just a little bit by little bit by little bit, and then I'll come back and I'll fill it in as I go. And that's all you have to do. If you get too carried away, like I say, before you know it, that thing is red hot, it's pulled completely out of shape. So just a little bit of patience, that's all it takes, and a thing will work out really good. And then another really good tip, is feel it before you keep welding. Yep. See that's really hot right now. And let it cool off. Looks like it's coming up pretty good, Mick. Yeah, I'm just tacking it on now, Pop. It's actually um, really good. I'm happy with that. Now you can see, as I was saying before, see the bow I've had to get in there? Yep. So it's got that nice bow section, and it's the same, the same as the patch that I've removed. It's formed up quite well, actually. Yeah, and then it also has a slight bow going here as well so it sort of goes dips in up that little bit as you can see there she goes two different ways yeah so that's a little bit tricky to get that because you've got to form the steel and then you sort of got to bring it out and around and then also to get that factory roll here that nice rounded nice radius on the corner there yep the old radius and to do that that's a that's going to look good when it's all welded up mm, it's got to look exactly how it came off You'll never so, know that's been off actually by the looks of that. No, and then you can see here, I'm being pretty fussy, uh, making sure, see the ends there, that they're all lining up perfectly. Yep.
Hey, how you going, fellas? Got a delivery here from Sydney, mate. All right. Um, from ROG, ROG Records in Cronulla. Right, eh? Where, where, where is it? Cronulla, Sydney. So yeah, you, right. you brought that all the way, huh? Yeah, yeah, I was heading up. Um, got other business to attend to, but we won't go there. And um, the boys offered me a bit of drink and silver, I couldn't resist. Yeah, yeah, so this is a genuine one. They tell me it is, mate. You know, yeah. if you've got any problems with them, I give them a ring. I don't really know. Shit from a shilling, but it looks oh, yeah, to me look a pretty good one. Good looks old. Unreal, mate. Yeah, old. yeah, no worries, fellas. What was your name? Uh, Ted Dunnett. Oh, Mick. Oh, nice to meet you, Ted. Good on you, Ted. Yeah, no Good worries. Champion, yeah, mate. yeah. Top job, mate. Yeah, no worries, yeah. fellas. Yeah, no, good. Any other bits coming up? Yeah, no, they said to tell you too. I was just going to get to there. Um, if there's any other bits that they could form for the LLJs and st so on, they'd uh, give you a ring anyway. Yeah, yes, all right, fellas. Well, listen, I hope it all goes well. Yeah. You just wouldn't know where I could pick up a rumbo and a, something to eat. What are you I'm looking heading for down the. Steak or a burger? What are you looking for? Oh, steak, all rumbos, right. yeah. All right, back into town, down yep. the main street. Right. Last pub on the right hand corner at the end of the street, mate. They'll, they'll sort you. Yeah. Sweet, yeah. sweet. All right, yeah. fellas. Might see you again anyway. Good on you. Ted. See you, mate. Right, thanks, mate. Ted. Thanks, mate. Thank you, see you, fellas. See you, mate. Cheers, mate. So, yeah, thanks, Ted. He's probably wasted by now with his rumbos. No, Ted's wanted. Is it wanted? <laughs> and Ted did it all right, or done it, or whatever he did, or he did something. <laughs> I don't Okay, so this is the um, rad support that we had dropped in yesterday from um, Ted Dunnett. So thanks, Ted. You, you did it all right, mate. So we've got this rad support here, and uh, it's totally genuine, original thing. You can see by a little bit of surface. It's got a, quite a bit of surface actually rust on it. But this is a bit ironic or iconic, the name on here. It's obviously been back in the day when it's been shipped to this mob. And I think it's Glen Glenoon Motors at Nara. So if any of you guys out there know who these people were, maybe in the comments you can let us know just out of curiosity. But I'd say that's been sent to those people back in the day um, and, and it's a ridgy dig, so it's a long, long time ago. Just a bit of a um, historical point to try and find out maybe if they're still in business or where they're at or whatever. They must have been a Holden dealer, I presume, um, or may have been even a repair shop. But that's obviously where this thing was addressed to at one point. And now, ironically enough, it's ended up here. But I'm just tack fill filling in these little holes here, these cutouts, bit by bit. Make a couple of little bits up and gently put them in. And uh, we'll get it ready and then we'll give it a blast up and we'll, we'll set it in the, um, in the hole for the rad support.
Oh, dude, that's my last fall up, and uh, that's fall finish now. So that was just prime over, build it up with epoxy primer, and I'll probably get away with it with two coats of uh, epoxy primer. You can see with the file, it shows you little lows. There's a little low there, there, and there, which is nothing. The primer will get that out. The general shape, it's all straight. It's all filed up really nice there. And then I've also put in the original spot weld marks. You can see them as you go around. Once there's primer over them, it'll look like it's 100% original. Ops, what's happening? Right, you know what that is, don't you? Oh, mate, what are you doing here? We've come over like, well, sounds good. Sounds fantastic, but this will <laughs> tell the truth. Right, I right, test right. Let's see what we got. Oh, mate, shit, yeah, whoa, no, two out of 10 for you, buddy. Not good at all. You're gonna have to oh, come on, pops. You're gonna have to tear all that up, throw that in the bin, and start again. That's that's terrible, mate. It's a bit harsh, mate. No, nah, good job. Well done, Mick. That's looking pretty damn good. That's that's uh, it's the top one that the real this bow as you how, go through. How much? Yeah. Oh, so, yep. so that's what how I was trying to explain it. Um, you need to have that bow through the middle of the door because if you go it to close your door. And if it's dead straight, the door's not going to close. It's going to hit on the rubber and it can be a real mess, actually. It's a bit of a thing to bend that in nice to make all that work. That's pretty good. What's she like if I lay it on there like that? How's that sit? How are we? Yeah, no, pretty good. That's, that's fitting really good, actually. Yeah. No, no, good work. Well done. You've done a good job. So, um, and then you come around the back of your pulse with that ruler and you can see where I've just filed that up. So we're not going to need any fillers in there. So the old primer is going to get that out. Perfect. Good work. So you can see where I've joined it above that, but yeah. Back to all steel. Oh, Dad, what's happening, mate? How's it going? Yeah, pretty good. I've just um, folded this little filler panel up that I've got here. Yep, and so you're up to your second one? Yeah, first Obviously. one's already in. You can see that in, done, welded yeah. up. That looks cool. Dressed up a little bit. Got a little bit more to go, but not much. It's pretty right. Yep. And this one, there he is there, just made up. Now I'll dress the, the edges of that up. Same on this rad support. And I'll just spot it in a couple of places. Yep. Carefully, then just tack it all in as I go and um, dress it up but what i'll do is once that's done we'll blast all that epoxy prime it and then we can start to fit it up to the car but yeah just use the um the zinc coated stuff as we do and away we go again another patch panel yeah nice all right well pops where's the radio support mate mate that's mia that bit it's somewhere kicking around the workshop i don't know it's looking a bit bare i don't know it's not going to look real good without it but anyway Oh, well, I think that's it for this episode. And, uh, yeah. You know, I think that's it. But remember, keep it real and keep it right, and we'll catch you next time. Catch you on the next one. <laughs>